Every single time I posted a video about a certain SSD or storage in general, uh, one question was always lurking in the comments. How much capacity matters when it comes to the performance of a drive? Are bigger drives actually faster than the smaller ones? And if they are, then in what situation? There has been a lot of evidence of this over the years, but I thought it would just be nice to retest this theory with some recent NVMe drives and compare some numbers. So without further ado, let's begin. I have three different models of SSDs for this test, and I have different capacities for each of the models. First, I have the 990 Pro, which is the fastest Gen 4 NVMe drive that I've tested recently, and I have a 1TB and a 2TB version right here. From the budget end of the scale, I have the Crucial P2, which is a cheap DRAM-less QLC Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and I also have a 1 and a 2TB version. And finally, the Samsung 980 Pro, and here I have the 250 gigabyte, 500 gigabyte, and the one terabyte version. But before I start talking about the results, so let's talk about the reasons why people uh, generally say that bigger SSDs are faster than the smaller ones. And the first reason is actually pretty obvious. So bigger SSDs sometimes get a bigger DRAM cache. The 2 terabyte 990 Pro, for example, gets 2 gigabytes of LPDDR4, while the 1 terabyte version only gets 1 gigabyte of DRAM cache. But if you look at the other specs, they don't really suggest that performance will be at all that different. The second and pretty much the main theory is that larger SSDs just have more memory cells available, which means that there is more space for SLC caching. Now, all current SSDs are either TLC or QLC, and that means they either store three or four bits of data per memory cell. And almost all of them use SLC caching, and that means that when writing data, they first write only one bit of data per cell, as long as there are enough free cells to do so, and then they fill in the rest. Now that makes the drive work much faster when you're writing to it, and then it kind of sorts all that mess later when you're giving it a break. Now when we look at the spec sheet for the 980 Pro, that seems like a valid theory. Sequential read numbers are actually pretty similar for each capacity, but the write speed of the 250 gigabyte model is only about half of the larger versions. But sequential write performance is almost irrelevant to real-world performance, and those numbers are mostly just used for marketing. So let's just look at some actual tests instead, and for that, I'm going to use the benchmarks that I usually highlight in all my SSD reviews. I'm going to begin with the PC Mark 10 quick test, and that is actually a bundle of different tests that replicate all those little light things that we do with our PCs on a daily basis. Uh, working with documents, for example, or just looking at vacation photos. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD or an extra SSD to their system for these simple little tasks. The 1TB version of the 990 Pro is behind the 2TB model by about 1%, so there is no real difference between them. The 1TB and 500GB models of the 980 Pro performed exactly the same, with the 250GB one trailing behind by a small margin. Now, it is outside the margin of error, but it is still only about 2%, so it is also not really that relevant. And the two P2 SSDs scored exactly exactly the same result, and keep in mind, I did the test three times with each of them. So for this kind of light use, there is basically no real difference between these two drives. The full PC Mark 10 suite is a bit more intense, and it is supposed to replicate a more constant, more intense, and a more serious use of your system and of your SSD. So this is a great benchmark for anyone that is looking for a main drive, or for anyone that needs to run applications that are heavy on the SSD. Now, between the two 990 Pros, the difference is still less than 2%. So even with a heavier one hour-ish long workload, it doesn't seem like more cash really makes much of a difference. But with the 980 Pro, the 250 gigabyte is now falling even further behind. The 500 gigabyte is about 25% faster, which is definitely significant. Going up to one terabyte improves performance by a bit, but not nearly as much. Between the two P2 drives, the two terabyte model leads by less than 1%. 
The PCMark consistency test is not really relevant for most of you because it simulates an extreme workload that stresses the drive for multiple hours on end and basically brings it to its very limits, which is not something that happens in most regular use cases. And here, things do get a bit more interesting, I would say, especially with the 990 Pro. The two terabyte model takes a huge win over the one terabyte one, and that really shows that in such an extreme case, either having more DRAM cache and or the ability to do SLC caching over more memory cells can really help outperform a smaller drive. If we look at the 980 Pros, there is a difference between the one terabyte and the 500 gig model as well, but it is not as big, while the 250 gigabyte model is clearly struggling a lot more here. Funnily enough, with the P2 drives, there is no difference at all between the two. Uh, now, it is hard to say if Samsung is maybe optimizing their SLC caching more or differently, or the lack of DRAM is playing a bigger role here, but it does show that buying two terabytes instead of a one terabyte won't always benefit you in these extreme workloads. The 3 Mark storage suite is a test that includes a lot of uh, gaming-related tasks like loading games, installing games, recording games, uh, saving games, as well as moving game folders around. The 2 terabyte 990 Pro has a small but not that relevant lead. It is about 4% ahead of the smaller drive. With the 980 Pros, the smaller capacity was actually taking a lead over the other two. And again, I tested these drives three times each, and we see the same story with the P2 drives. The smaller one was ahead of the 2 terabyte one, although only by a small margin. I usually don't like to talk much about sequential read and write performance, since it doesn't really represent a proper real-life use, as well as previous tests, but it is good to see some numbers here as well. So the 990 Pro has both drives giving exactly the same result every time, as they are hitting the hard limits of the Gen 4 slot on my test bench. But with the 980 Pro, the 250 gigabyte model is falling behind, which is what we could have guessed from the specs. But between the larger two models, the gap is, I would say, irrelevant. And with the P2 drives, the smaller capacity was actually a little bit faster here, by a very small margin again, but still technically ahead. So the answer to the question from the start of the video, uh, yes, there are performance differences between capacities, and larger SSDs are a little bit faster overall, but in my opinion, the situations where capacity actually starts to matter is not really relevant for most users. Uh, with the 980 Pro, only the 250 gigabyte version really fell behind in a couple of tests, but 500 gigabyte SSDs have become so cheap nowadays that you shouldn't be buying 250 gigabytes anyway. With the 990 Pro, the only situation where the 2 terabyte model was actually significantly faster was that really extreme workload. But if you are a rare user that needs an SSD for these extreme workloads, you probably need the extra storage that the larger SSDs have to offer anyway. Now, other rules with SSDs still apply here, like you should always try to keep a good amount of space free for optimal performance of the drive. Obviously, if you fill the one terabyte and a two terabyte SSD with 900 gigabytes of data, the results will clearly favor the two terabyte one. So if you expect to use close to the maximum capacity, it is definitely worth spending a bit more on a larger model for some extra headroom. But assuming that you're not going to get near the limit, uh, for most users and most workloads, buying what you need plus a little bit more is plenty and you shouldn't worry about losing performance because you didn't buy the largest capacity available. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12-volt high-power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from NVIDIA. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there, and as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that 
it cleared some things up a bit. Uh, please do let me know in the comments down below if there are any other storage topics that you would like me to cover. I would love to hear your ideas. Now that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.